Well, g'day curd nerds. Welcome to another cheese making tutorial. Today we're making Zeno Mizithra, which is sour Mizithra, which is a Greek cheese. So this cheese stems from all over Greece. However, this version in particular hails from the Greek islands in uh, the Aegean Sea. So uh, Crete and the islands to the north of, of that. It is a lactic set cheese, uh, very similar to, I wouldn't say ricotta, it's different than ricotta, it's lactic set. So you acidify the, the milk using starter cultures, add a tiny bit of rennet and leave it for 24 hours. And the curds and whey start to separate and then you can hang it in a bag and then mold it. So begin by sanitizing your equipment. So the ingredients for sour mizithra are four liters or 4.2 quarts of whole cow's milk. I'm using pasteurized unhomogenized. One quart of a teaspoon of aromatic mesophilic culture. I used Mad Millie Fresh Aromatic Mesophilic Culture, and I use two sachets. Four drops of single strength liquid rennet. I'm using IMCU 200 rennet, and that was diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And two teaspoons of non-iodized cheese salt. So pour your milk into your pot, and begin to heat it to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. So once you get to temperature, remove it from the heat. I just simply turned it off and left the pot on the stove. That's the culture I'm using. So add it to the milk, sprinkle it over the top. So it's a good idea just to remove your spoon. Sprinkle that over the surface. I probably could have got away with one sachet, which is just over an eighth of a teaspoon, but I did off camera add another sachet to take it up to quarter of a teaspoon. Pop the lid on and let it rehydrate for five minutes. After the five minutes, stir the culture in. Just check the temperature and it's okay. So pop the lid on and we're going to allow the milk to ripen for one hour. So after an hour the cream may have floated to the top. Just stir that back in again and now we're going to add the rennet solution. So pour it in whilst you're stirring and then stir for no more than one minute. So now we're going to allow the milk to set at room temperature for 24 hours. 24 hours later. So after the 24 hours, thank, thank you Mr. SpongeBob man, the curds and the whey have separated as you can see there. The curds are pulled away from the side of the pot and there is a big pool of whey on top. This is when you know it is ready for the next step. So take it over to a butter muslin lined colander. I'm using tight weave cheesecloth there. Set it up in your sink area or your draining area. And I'm just going to ladle the whey off first. This whey is very acidic so you will not be able to make ricotta out of it. And now we're going to ladle the curd slices into the cheesecloth using a ladle. There we go, all ladled. It's fairly solid stuff, so it doesn't fracture. Hello, Bonnie. So now we're just going to grab opposite corners of the cloth and tie a granny knot in each one. And we're going to make that into a bag for draining. So I'm just going to take it into my laundry area where I've got a draining area. 
using a stainless steel hook. Nice one. So into the laundry. We're going to drain that for 12 hours. So I just hang it over our clothes area and it drips into the pot. So we're going to drain for a total of 12 hours. So 12 hours later, I've just got a glass bowl there, a mat and a, a basket. So I'm just tipping that way away. It's too acidic to be used for much good. So I'm going to remove the cheese from the bag and place it into that glass bowl that has been previously sanitised. And all you do is just take the corners and just roll the cheese out. It shouldn't stick to the cheesecloth. There we go. I'm just having a little bit of a taste to see what it tastes like, see if it is indeed sour. And it is a little bit, it tastes a little bit like cream cheese at this stage. So we're going to add our two teaspoons of salt. I'm using a non-iodized salt there. So just sprinkle that over the top and then stir that through the cheese. So at this stage it could be well and truly cream cheese, but we're going to let it age a little bit longer. So I've tasted it. It is salty enough, so I don't need to add any more salt. And now I'm going to spoon it into the basket that I'm using there. And pushing it down as I go along. And then just smoothing the top. So I did eventually use a soup spoon to smooth it that had been sanitised just to get a smooth top and get all the nubbins off the side of the basket. So I lightly sprinkled it with salt on the top just to allow it to shrink away from the basket. Now we're going to allow that to drain for 24 hours. Just putting an umbrella over there so no beasties get into it. So 24 hours later, we're going to remove the cheese from the basket and flip it over. It should come out okay. Now, because I'm using a tapered basket, it didn't want to go back in properly. So this could cause some issues a little bit later on. Foreshadowing. So I'm just banging it to get it back into the basket. So if I had to use a straight side basket, probably would have been much better and easy to get back in there. Anyway, a light sprinkle with some salt on top to help it shrink a little bit. I'm going to drain it for another 24 hours. The following day. Um, traditionally this cheese is moulded a little bit. Here it is here. Let's get it out of the mould. Hopefully it comes out of the mould. It was better than this yesterday. Oh my goodness. It's just fallen apart. It's so soft. It's a soft cheese. Anyway, it is what it is. <laughs> what happens when uh, I salt the cheese a little too much and it kind of fell apart. Anyway, it is supposed to be this soft, uh, a little bit firmer for the mold. It actually unmolded properly yesterday. Maybe I should have used another mould instead of this one. It's a little bit tapered, so it didn't come out properly. That's no good at all, is it? So anyway, let's uh, try this. It should be tangy, tangier than, say, ricotta or ricotta salada. Uh, it should be a little bit salty, um, but delicious nonetheless. So let me grab a knife and some crackers, and we'll see how that goes. So I've got my crackers, and I'm ready to go. Let's grab a bit of this cheese. 
I'll have to figure out a way how to wrap it up. Um, I think maybe some um, perforated wrap would be better. I might cut it in half this way across the whole horizontal. Anyway, let's try, taste it first. It's very much like a, a dry cream cheese um, that I would normally make. Mmm. That's very nice. It's got a tang to it, really tart. Um, so it's like a tart sour cream. So sour cream's not, you know, it's a lot runnier. This is a lot firmer. Um, if I follow the recipe correctly, which I believe I did. And, uh, yeah, it can be harder than this, it can be actually aged. Not this one, this is a bit of a disaster, but uh, the cheese tastes a bit by itself. It's really nice. Reminds me kind of like um, yogurt cheese, uh, Labner, but uh, a little bit more coarser. Uh, yeah, this one's a little bit more melt in the mouth, so yeah, nice. That is a yummy cheese, it's really nice. Really simple to make, as you saw, but really yummy. So it's like a firm sour cream, but not as rich as sour cream, if that makes sense. Let me just like, grab a little bit more. I have to put it in a bowl, I think, to keep it in the fridge. But definitely worth making if you're um, if you like a, a tangy sort of cream cheesy sort of thing. It's really, it's a little bit difficult to, to describe, but it's got lactic notes, a little bit of sourness, hence the name, Zeno Mizithra. Um, but yeah, nice, really good cheese. Mmm. No, I like that one a lot. Oh, this would be great on a, um, a baked potato, jacket potato, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, be perfect. Uh, the saltiness and the, the tanginess would really, really work with that. Um, I dare say this would probably not split if you used it in cooking. Um, it would be, it would kind of melt into the, the dish. So it'd be good for um, any sort of uh, sauce that you want to make. Probably pair really nice with mushrooms as well. Make a nice mushroom sauce. Mm as the thickener. So here's the Zeno Mizithra, now that it's been sculpted. It doesn't look like a mess like it was before. I just used a, a flat knife, like this one, a butter knife, and just sculpted it into shape. So it looks a little bit more presentable, doesn't it? Anyway, the flavour's the same, it tastes beautiful, uh, it's a great cheese. I recommend it if you just want to make a quick lactic set cheese, although quick two days is uh, debatable but it is a nice cheese so give it a try and uh, if you want to make it then you can get the ingredients at littlegreenworkshops.com.au well thanks for watching curd nerds and i'll see you next time